In the public eye, certain prehistoric animals get a little more love than others. Whether it comes down to looks, body plans, or simply natural history, most people aren't sure why some ancient animals get the spotlight, while others get cast to be forever forgotten in the annals of history. One animal that's been popularly discussed to this day is the woolly mammoth. These creatures were big players within the Earth's ecosystems during the Pliocene. It remained relatively abundant until the Holocene Epoch, when the species reached its unfortunate extinction. Luckily, the presence of frozen mammoth remains in Siberia and North America has allowed scientists to study the origins of the species, as well as answer a slew of other scientific questions. It's just like the saying goes, there's nothing that a mammoth popsicle can't fix. Without further ado, let's take a look at what the woolly mammoth looked like in its natural environment, and then take a deep dive into some of its most conspicuous relatives in the evolutionary timeline. To begin our conversation on the history of the woolly mammoth, we have to discuss what the mammoth was like. I mean, looking at what animals evolved to become, the mammoth would be like reading a book blurb and then calling it a day. Absolute insanity. During the Pliocene and parts of the Holocene, woolly mammoths roamed through ecosystems known as mammoth steppe or steppe tundra. These regions were often covered in snow and sparsely decorated with grasses, sedges, and low shrubs. Woolly mammoths acted like their modern-day relatives, elephants, moving around and eating herbaceous plants within their environment. Just like their descendants, it was thought that they used their dexterous noses to pick up food and take large amounts of water. Think of it like the world's first silly straw. Woolly mammoths also had adaptations that equipped them for life in cold and harsh environments. Reduced appendages, like ears and toes, thickened fur, and a double coat all allowed them to thrive where others couldn't. With their bona fide winter jacket and silly straw noses, they were unstoppable. Well, at least for a little bit. Mammoths inhabited what is modern-day America and Siberia, which we know due to the abundance of fossils distributed in those locations. One of the oldest ancestors to the woolly mammoth is a creature known as the Paleomastodon, or Ancient Mastodon. The Paleomastodon is an extinct animal within the elephant clade, Proboscidea. It was elephant-like in appearance, but only stood to be around 7.2 feet tall on average. The Paleomastodon had both maxillary tusks protruding from their upper jaw and mandibular tusks protruding from their lower jaw. This arrangement created a scissor-like structure that likely aided in defense. Most popular depictions show the animal having a small prehensile proboscis, almost like a mini version of what modern-day elephants have. They lived in semi-arid marshy environments within modern-day Egypt, Ethiopia, and Libya around 23 to 33 million years ago. We can think of the Paleomastodon almost like a ball of clay, ready to be formed and meshed by the powers of evolution to produce a variety of new species, including the mammoth, and of course, our modern-day elephants. Who could forget about those? Moving away from the Eocene and into the Oligocene, the next major descendant of the woolly mammoth that arose from the Paleomastodon are species within the genus Gomphotherium. Species within this genus looked extremely similar to those within the Paleomastodon group. It had as many differences as, well, all the new iPhones have from each other. <coughs> so, none. All jokes aside, animals within the Gomphotherium lived from around the end of the Oligocene to the late Pleistocene, or early Holocene. Much like the first descendant we discussed, they are relatively similar looking to modern elephants, with a few unusual modifications, of course. Just like the Paleomastodon, these animals had two sets of tusks suited for a strong defense. Additionally, they had flattened molar-like teeth that were developed for the foraging of dense plant material, very much like our modern-day elephants. They also had a trunk, but the size of it is hotly debated within the scientific community. Some claim that it was shorter, similar to that of the Paleomastodon, while others claim that it was much longer, like that of an elephant or a woolly mammoth. As it is with the nature of biology, there's one true answer. We don't know. The best guess that most people can agree on is that their trunks likely started around the length of Paleomastodon close to the time of their divergence, and it slowly elongated over time, which would explain why more modern animals developed longer trunks. Branching off from the Gomphotherium group, there are two major relatives of woolly mammoths, the Mastodons and the Stegodons. According to most sources, it isn't likely that the woolly mammoth evolved from these. Rather, it split off later in the evolutionary timeline from a common ancestor. Thus, being fully transparent, these aren't considered to be true ancestors. Instead, you can think of them as cousins. Yeah, we get it. Evolutionary relationships are confusing. Don't worry, they can even give seasoned scientists a headache from time to time. Both mastodons and stegodons are extinct groups that diverged from the major elephant-like group sometime during the Oligocene. In essence, both of these groups consist of species that appear very similar, with a large stature, prehensile trunk, and prominent tusks. Aside from some differences in anatomy, such as teeth and bones, a major difference between mastodons and stegodons is that stegodons lived in tropical-like environments, while mastodons lived in cooler woodlands. These environmental differences are often illustrated in depictions where stegodons are shown with a rather furless body, while mastodons are shown with a dense coat. Finally, we've come to our last major ancestor. Phew, that's been a whirlwind. Yep, this is it. That's all the ancestors of the woolly mammoth. Well, actually, 
there's a few more species and some groups that are thought to have diverged from the same group or separated to form the mammoth altogether. However, they're hotly debated, which means we could talk about this for hours. The closest relative to the woolly mammoth is widely regarded to be the steppe mammoth or Mammathus trongotheri. As you could probably guess from the name, steppe mammoths were just as described, mammoths. They looked extremely typical for a mammoth, having an extremely large stature and two of those lovable tusks. The steppe mammoth lived in areas around northern Eurasia during the middle Pliocene. Later in its timeline, it began to migrate to other areas like North America, where it would later separate and form new species, such as the woolly mammoth. To this point, we've covered the various ancestors that led to the evolution of the woolly mammoth as we know it, from paleomastodons to steppe mammoths and everything in between. There's quite a lot of time and evolution that went into the creation of the mammoth. But what happened after the mammoth's extinction? Did they simply vanish from the face of the earth as we know it? Did they give rise to something newer and better? Well, let's discuss. As said in Jurassic Park, life uh, finds a way. And it truly did for our beloved woolly mammoth. For years, scientists had the general understanding that later separations and evolution events occurred within the elephant clade to produce new species after the woolly mammoth. In other words, animals that gave rise to mammoths also gave rise to modern animals that we see, like elephants. With that said, it was largely unknown which animals they split from, or even when they split. Luckily, we have a magical super substance that allows us to travel back in the future to answer these questions. DNA Recent work in DNA sequencing has shown that specific elephants are more related to woolly mammoths than others. Specifically, mitochondrial DNA sequencing, which is the blue ribbon of DNA sequencing, has enlightened us that the closest relative to woolly mammoths are African elephants. Their DNA was shown to be 98.5 to 99.4% identical, which is no laughing matter. In contrast, they found that other modern elephants, like the Asian elephant, had origins elsewhere. More specifically, it's now understood that Asian elephants separated from the major elephant group around the same time as the woolly mammoth, whereas African elephants evolved from an earlier, common ancestor. With all this in mind, the clear descendants of mammoths are elephants, all of which are found within and branched off from the same group. Specific species, such as the African elephant, may be more related to woolly mammoths than others, which is a direct result of their timing of evolution. <sighs> That's it. We've officially made it through some of the most well-known ancestors and descendants of the famed woolly mammoth. From the earliest ancestors in the Paleomastodon group to the lookalike cousins in the Mastodons and Stegodons, the family of the greater elephant clade, the Proboscidea, is entrenched with winding branches, winding pathways, and most importantly, mystery. With modern DNA-based techniques, we've been able to crack into this family tree and cut away some of the branches, leaving a picture that describes some of the basics regarding woolly mammoth evolution. This work has allowed us to discover new ancestors, get rid of completely unrelated genera, and have a better understanding of how the woolly mammoth came to be and how it lives on in other species, such as elephants. While this type of stuff is truly cutting edge, scientists in different fields of study across the world are truly at the edge of their seats for what new findings are to come.